All right, guys, today we are coming back to a cooler I was on a few weeks ago. It was low on refrigerant. I came back and it's not low yet. Couldn't really find much of a leak. It was just small, small signals. So we're changing this disconnect box. It had a leg that was bad. We're gonna get rid of the fuses. I'm anti-fuse disconnect unless it's absolutely necessary because they oversized the breaker for whatever reason. You know, unless there's a reason for it, if the breaker's doing its job and it's sized properly, I do not believe in fuses. I think they suck. So uh, I thought I was gonna have to kill this one too because it's kind of a mangoided mess when you look at all the different wiring. But this cooler is not actually ran in it. It's kind of confusing because they brought some heavy wires up to here from there. Um, they, all they did is they kind of came through and uh, uh, just used it as a junction box. So as always, this is not a DIY channel. Do not do any of the electrical stuff I'm doing. It's just a disclaimer. So anyhow, uh, the other wire, I believe what we got going on here is just for the solenoid valve because it comes into the bottom there punches through the wall and then connects to the solenoid there we got to go lock it out i did verify which one it was so we've got our lock and stuff um you're always supposed to lock it out but i always always make sure when it's away from me where i can't see it that i do it so we already verified power was off I've made this one my disconnect lock. It's an aluminum one. Got it marked as locked out. Got it, it's HVACR. Also got my name on the other side here. So that they got my phone number and stuff, so it's all there on it. We'll also be doing the PM service on uh, the RTU unit here. The uh, This unit here didn't act like it wanted to pump down, but it appears that it did. So we went ahead and double checked it, made sure the power's dead. I like my bolt stick here. One of the only one approved by OSHA, believe it or not. Kind of surprising. You don't see that very often. So I had one of these from long ago back in the day and honestly I've been having a lot of problems out of the Klein. These things have a junk uh, clip here and I just am not happy with it. So I went back to the old basic that I had from like 20 years ago and everything is dead. Already tested this against live circuit to make sure. So let's go ahead and get this thing yanked out. We did get another square D here, so we'll be able to, it's not quite the same size. We'll make it a little more of a pain in the butt, but we will get it uh, mounted back in there. Yeah, you just got the two going to the solenoid, which we'll probably cut those couple of them here dock these things with our one two three method it's generic and it works so we got one two three they've got the conveniently placed defrost clock right here on the back side which makes it a little more difficult to get to all the nuts all right so we got it out of there one of the things you guys will run into sometimes is these legs won't all go back into place so you see them go up there like that that's all the way forward this is a good way for you to single phase. When it comes to safety, when in doubt, rip it out. So got that out of there. You can see what they did there. They ran that wire through. So we'll get that back into place. And we'll have to drill some holes into this thing to make it fit. 
So we know that's going to fit right there on that one. So we know which one to punch out. Got our fancy Klein destruction hammer. Yeah, these aren't hammers, but you know, I'm using the side of it, it'll be all right. And like I said, these suck when they compare, when you could do a Klein crimp, or like, they, they didn't do a good job. I don't know why they purposely did not align that so they made a nice, perfect oval. But as they still do it to this day. They look like Klein's, but they, they ain't. Mine turned up messy one day and this is what I found and I ended up trying them and thought, ah, oh, Crescent's good. They are on some stuff, just not this. So we got the bottoms punched out, back punched out. Get that thing mounted back up. Might actually match up with everything. Not too bad. They've got this stupid solenoid coming through the side here. It goes out through the back and this has not uh, got the amount of surface area that the other box had. So since this hole there lines up with this hole, I'm gonna drill that thing out and just rerun that over there. They've got all their little couplings in here. It's a total wreck the way they did it. A lot of extra work. Um, make a 10 minute job turn into 20 to 30, if not longer. They got all these freaking wires running through there to save nickels and dimes. So I've got my old Greenlee quick cutter here, which is kind of cool. You can sit there and change whatever size you want. It's carbon, uh, carbide tip here, so get that thing drilled out. The way that's designed, it doesn't allow it to go all the way into the box and hit another wire behind it. That's one of the few times this little wrench has actually came in handy. Because it's when uh, you're in little tight spots like this where you can't really get in there with your uh, screwdriver and stuff very easy. You can get right in there and tighten that bad dog up and tighten her right up nice and tight and she's tight to the thing. So still gonna have to do a little bit of drilling here on this piece, which kind of sucks, but it was a good idea, but nothing's perfect, I guess. So we're just gonna drill from the uh, inside out and uh, get that lined up and then we'll run a connector through there. out take the ground out of the other one you would think they would have bonded it to it I mean just an extra safety precaution I mean you know guess it wasn't that important who knows so we're gonna junction here on this lug and then we're going to secure it to the box um, it's obviously inside the unit grounded to the chassis but I prefer to have it out here at the box too as an extra piece of protection. I'm sure there's probably a reason for it, but uh, I think it comes down to cost, honestly. So we got all the wiring taken care of there. Got it all tucked in, wiring it back together, good to go, put this cover back on. We're also going to be doing the PM on the equipment here. So we've got the filters and belts here. Also got to do, I think possibly all the uh, coolers and stuff also. So going to uh, get started on this too. Got the power turned back on. Let's get this back out of defrost. There goes the old refrigerant. Three evaporators on this thing, so been converted to 407C. We'll let this run for a while. We're going to go ahead and get over there and start on that. So we're going to go ahead and wash this evaporator out. It's a fairly new unit, but unfortunately, these filters have been leaking by. This is outside the building, so if we get a little bit of water down here in this bottom, it's not going to leak anywhere, but we're going to get this evaporator cleaned out before it becomes an issue. Got the new belt on there, all dated, everything's straight. Tension's tight, good to go. Kind of uh, the coils all washed out and blew out the electrical section with air. Gonna run it and check her operation. Gotta get up a couple of wires here that are kind of dangling across things. That's a good way to have them rub out. We walk in the building and the leak detector goes nuts. 
and this kind of happened last time but i didn't air the system out very good so that's what we're doing today we went ahead and waited for it to kick on it came up and hit about 72 pounds shut it off then i shut off the fans for the uh, evaporators in this instance here i need the variable uh, option from the heated diode so what we did is we opened up all the doors out in front there so now she's not going as nuts but we are running the fans just a little bit to help blow the air out because it's contaminated so we've got several doors open on this glass cooler open last time i had it over here by this new cooler which made no sense because it's a new coil so at least now it's not going berserk as bad as what it was and we are on most sensitive mode so let's go ahead and turn off the fans Hopefully we can find this thing because it is a little bit low after all. When I uh, came in here, the um, sight glass was flashing before I came in. That was after the coil was still wet for me washing it out. So it is a little bit low again, which I added, I forget how many pounds, but it was, it was a few. Um, let's see if we can get a hit over here where it was crazy the last time. So let's speed it up a touch. And down here is where I was having the issues. Which I know it can set on the floor. Which is interesting because we can come over here to this area and it starts to stop. So it's like it's that new coil doing it. But supposedly it was this coil. One of the other guys found a leak on it or something and told them they needed a new one. but. It was uh, not done yet. So we don't have nothing like what we got on the other. So we walk the dog over this way. See, it's starting to get nuts again. Here we go. So it makes no sense. On the new one, and I cut all this tape and stuff off. And see, as you get higher, it slows down and I've taken all these panels off and usually if you stick anything in there it will go nuts and of course that's one of the things I hate about this stupid detector the damn rubber thing gets caught on everything and then you lose your tip yay I got my tip back but look so there's nothing nothing in here this is so frustrating because it should be like plain as day we'll speed it up a little bit see if we can drag it across the back of the coil here see if there was any leaks it should be picking it up off the back of the coil at the bottom i was hoping maybe they had a bad solder joint usually if it's trailing the insulation you can kind of catch it up the other end of the insulation there's a cut on it here Nothing there. Very frustrating because I got to find this stupid thing. We're going to look around a little bit. You just sat right there. It just had a coronary. It's finally slowed down. So we're just taking the end of our tip here and I'm just using my finger as a guide post, I'm like kind of dragging it like this. Watch this. We're up here. Gotcha, baby. Oh, that went berserko. Okay, we'll go up to a little bit higher. It's not over here on this aluminum. It's right here in the coil. Yes, sir, right in there. We can go back down to the super sensitive mode and we'll drag it across some of these other coils. Because supposedly, I thought it was that coil that we were leaking on. Let's go over here to this other one. Kind of. See, this is what I don't like about the H10. I mean, the great thing is it finds stuff, but you gotta let it set there. So you stay right there. And we're gonna, we're gonna take our 12 foot cord here and drag it along this back side. See if we can find anything here. I try not to get it too close to the dirt and the coil. 
Yeah. What I did wrong the last time was I didn't clear out this cooler. First thing you gotta do is empty the cooler out of, of the air that's in here. So, yeah, we have nothing, so we're good there. That makes me feel better. Awesome, whoops. And then what did I do? I knocked my little thing off again. Oh well, she came out of retirement. We're gonna go ahead and grab the DTEC and make sure it finds it too, that way we know it's working. Now the problem we got is it was so contaminated in there that this must have just not been able to narrow it down. Um, in theory, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be able to do. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta use practicality and common sense. All right, so we're on super mode. Let's go back in here. So that's the difference between, I call it digital, because uh, infrared's digital, on or off. So still getting nothing on super, but let's go ahead and drag it across. Oh yeah, I yeah, don't like that. So you got that instant, look at that, it's actually going off before I even get close to that area. So it's actually doing pretty good, look at this. I'm sorry, Mr. D-Tech, I, I didn't, didn't give you a fair chance. I kind of gave you a contaminated room that you zeroed out on, even though you're not supposed to zero. Well, you will zero out. So she's gone nuts. Yeah. Yeah, she's gone nuts. Now, let's see how, how many parts per million it kind of shows up. Anything over 80, look. See, she started picking things up even in here like this. Wow, holy crap, 300s and I'm that far away. Oh yeah, plain as day. Going higher, it's starting to go down. Actually, we're going back up again. Yeah, it's definitely down here at the bottom of this coil. Now, some of you are probably wondering, okay, it's probably right here in one of these loops on the end. I'm gonna tell you it's not, because it's not, because I scanned all this. I took all these ends off, took all these ends off. So we're in there on the ends and we have two parts per million. So it's definitely in the coil. Let's go to super again, scan this coil. So what was probably happening is it was probably floating across the floor, falling down to probably across winds of some sort. And uh, it was going across the floor, boom, across that way. It's the only thing that can make sense to me. So finish scanning around a little bit. Don't wanna have to do this again later. Go down here to this new one, because like I said, I got nothing on this new one. And see, it didn't go nuts at all when I was down here on the floor area, so... The, the heated diode definitely can go berserk, but it didn't go nuts when I went over to it. So we have nothing going on in this area here, but like I said, get over here and BAM! So, found the leak. Throw a few pounds in there and tell them they need a new evaporator, just like they did right here, so... Game on. So now we're gonna start this thing up. It may chug a lug a little bit here because the uh, refrigerant's kind of like gonna come back and smack the compressor in the face. We may try to rapid cycle it on and off at the disconnect, see if we can save it a little headache. There's no suction valves or anything for me to restrict to kind of throttle it. Ain't no worse than the brand new ones that do this. They'll do it three times. It don't sound like it's getting nailed, but... Made a good attempt. I don't want to take the compressor out. That thing's freaking old. This was a R22 originally. 
capable of 502, so that tells you what year it is. It's got to be at least uh, 91 area. Actually, she's flashing off right now, unless it's trying to pump down, which it could be trying to do. We'll uh, finish getting two pounds in there, and then we'll stop and see if it shuts off. It should be pretty warm in there, because I've had it off for at least 20 minutes. And uh, opened up all the doors to let the uh, refrigerant out of the uh, room area. So to help out, I'm just keeping my uh, solenoid checker there running as I'm watching this uh, sight glass fill up. We're at nine pounds and a half so far. So a little lower than I thought. And what's funny is it didn't uh, flash off until after I washed that coil. So obviously the coil was pretty dirty. Hopefully that ain't screwing my voice up too bad. It looks like we're right around 12, 12 and a half pounds. You can see the suction pressure there start to drop. So it's getting the last bit out of the container. So that's gonna do us good. We're actually uh, solid there on the side glass. So basically I'm just going to make sure it pumps down and uh, wrap it up, guys. What you've seen over here was basically the normal PM that everyone does every time. Forced out the condenser coil front and backwards. Uh, didn't have to split it because it's uh, only about a year and a half old. And uh, we've been on it, uh, maintaining it. Got the new filters in there, new belt. This thing has a headmaster control, one of the uh, temperature sensing ones that goes off of the uh, liquid line, which was kind of interesting the way it's wired, which I checked and seen if it was okay or not. It literally breaks both fans, which I thought was a little odd didn't say if there was two only do one so it's worked this long i guess i'll leave it alone and this was a linux unit originally that had a bad heat exchanger so um they just transitioned it over and made it uh made it work had to bring it out a little bit unfortunately but uh as you can see it's kind of a behind the building not a humongo deal got that one back together and then uh same thing here with that one we got it all washed out uh, and then there was one over there to the right. So I just got to do a few small reach-ins, uh, check condensers and stuff like that, and I'll wrap it up. If you guys like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Till next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.